Welcome back to Capital City Sunday. We're switching gears now to talk about a new concept for Wisconsin called investment crowdfunding. I'm joined by David Dupuy, who runs the website craftfund.com. Thanks for being here. Pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. You appeared with some Republican legislators last week at the Capitol to pitch a new bill which would basically allow people in Wisconsin to engage in investment crowdfunding. I want to talk about your website in a little bit, but first let's talk about that term and what it means so people understand it. Sure. Um, investment crowdfunding is essentially um, sourcing capital, smaller um, chunks of capital from a much larger group of people online. Um, currently, crowdfunding primarily exists with websites that are well known such as Kickstarter. And uh, with Kickstarter and those websites, what uh, contributors get in exchange for their donation is a sample product or, or gear. Uh, investment crowdfunding is going to take it to a different level where in, instead of um, gear or a sample product, investors receive um, shares in the company itself. So in other words, right now you can go to Kickstarter and let's say you want to help somebody fund their movie or fund their company, you can give them a donation. This would be funding a company and you actually get shares that you own, you have equity in that company, exactly. right? Exactly, exactly. And it's right now not legal in Wisconsin, but it's not legal because of some very old laws. It's not illegal because it's dangerous necessarily or anything like that. Um, talk about those laws and what would have to be changed. It's securities laws as I understand it. Sure. Um, there is, uh, by and large, if you want to raise capital for your business, you have two options. Either um, receive a loan from a bank, financing, or sell shares uh, of your company to investors. And the rules in this country and in Wisconsin, in, in addition, are such that if you want to sell shares to people, um, you either have to register those shares with the government, which is a very costly um, endeavor, or you have to sell them to what we call accredited investors, which are those people who have a certain um, net worth. Um, what this law is going to do is allow, um, it's going to create an exemption in the securities laws such that state residents, regardless of net worth, can invest up to $5,000 in companies. And is it $5,000 total per person or $5,000 in one company? In other words, could somebody invest 5000 here, 5000 here? Would it be just a limit of 5000 It Right now it would be $5,000 per, per project. So a company would not be able to accept above $5,000 unless they have evidence that the investor is a credited investor. Let's talk a little bit about um, protections. You mentioned there's a $5,000 limit. I think that the one thing people would jump to right away is say, you know, if there's a startup company that's legitimate, why can't they get a bank loan? Um, why can't they go through the process right now of registering with the state and making sure that things are done with all the paperwork filed? Mm -hmm. Um, and I guess the answer to that is what? I mean, is it harder to get capital now than it was 10 years ago? Because that's, that's what I hear a lot nationally and statewide. Certainly. I think we, we, um, most businesses can appreciate a, a shared frustration with the current lending environment and how difficult it is to get a loan, even if you're a small, an existing small business, to get the additional capital that you need to grow. Uh, it's, it's incredibly difficult. Um, and so with that option being off the table for some businesses, um, you're left with essentially trying to reach this small pool of investors in Wisconsin we call accredited investors. Um, you have to try and reach them and get your message out to them and, and raise capital through that small pool. What this will do is expand the pool to every Wisconsin resident uh, with specific um, investor protection measures in place to ensure that these are handled properly. And to give people an idea of why you're on the program talking about this, your website, your company, this is kind of what you do, right? I mean, I know you do crowdfunding. Are you doing actual investment crowdfunding at this point? Not at this point, no. Uh, we are waiting on regulations both on a state and federal level that will make it legal for us to do this. Um, but we look at uh, countries where investment crowdfunding is legal and where it's flourished, like in uh, the UK, and, uh, and where there really are no zero incidents of fraud. And we see that as what is going to happen here in the U.S. And we get really excited about providing this new source of capital for small businesses. And I know your site and your company deals specifically with craft brewers, which I know a lot of people in Wisconsin are familiar sure. with. Talk about how you help them. Sure. Well, I, our, our focus will be on connecting um, craft breweries and food companies with passionate investors. And uh, if you look at the U.K., the one category where investment crowdfunding has really flourishes in the food and beverage industry. And there are several reasons for that, which, which I can talk about um, later. But 
Uh, if you apply that to Wisconsin context, I think it gets really exciting because we have such a strong history and culture here in food and beverage. Um, it's culturally important to us, and it's also a huge economic driver. Uh, we're the number five food manufacturer in the country, um, number one cheese producer, number eight in craft breweries. Um, it's a huge economic driver, and restaurants here employ over 250,000 people. So for uh, a new capital source to help drive the food and beverage industry here in Wisconsin, I think is a, a great thing for the state, and that's what I'm excited about doing. Representative David Craig, who's sponsoring this bill, he is from the Waukesha County area, talked about the fact that even if you want a family member to invest in your small business right now, you've got to fill out, and he held up, a, a, I think, a two-inch thick packet of paperwork mm -hmm. that could cost up to $30,000. How much of a disincentive is that for some small businesses? Oh, it's a huge disincentive, uh, especially whether or not you're definitely for a startup, but even a, a small business that's looking to expand, um, that's a lot of red tape that you have to hack through in order to get the capital that you need, especially even on a, um, a friends and family level. Um, so what this will do is help streamline the friends and family financing process and allow um, businesses to go beyond that and extend their network and tap into that, that capital. This sounds like a, a 21st century idea. I know that uh, you and the, and the people pitching this in the legislature think it's a no-brainer. The one thing I wonder though is if I went to my investment guy and I said I want to give five thousand dollars to this startup company, I have a feeling he would say that's a very risky investment. Uh, you know you probably won't see any return on that. You may lose all five thousand dollars. Is that a battle you're gonna have to fight and I guess how would you respond to somebody who, are, who would say that to you? Yeah, and there are um, certain, um, within the disclosure document that, that will be required to be given to each investor, there's um, specific language that makes clear that these investments are risky. Um, and there, there's no doubt about that. I think what you see is, in, in my opinion, you're going to see a lot of um, small mom and pop businesses and um, food and beverage companies that take advantage of this. And people are going to come at this investment for different reasons. For a financial return, yes, certainly. Um, but also... Should they be coming at it for that reason, though, I guess is what I'm getting at. Or, I mean, because it, I know, we both know, a lot of startups don't make it. Sure, fail. sure. Um, there are a lot of statistics that show that a significant portion of startups fail. Um, but let's also keep in mind this applies to existing businesses that have a track record as sure. well. So there'll be startups and existing businesses that are looking for capital. Um, to, to answer your question, should people be coming at this for a financial return solely? Um, you know, that, that, that's up to the investor. I think you, there are multiple reasons you could look at these investments. When I talk to people, they get excited about it, largely because they love these um, businesses, they're passionate about them, and they want to see them grow and expand. So there's the satisfaction in participating in that and owning that experience. And on top of it, if the business does well, they get a share in, in, that, um, in that return. Uh, what I get most excited about is thinking about uh, Wisconsin residents kind of taking control of their communities and directing the future of their communities and what it looks like. I mean, how many times have I driven by uh, a vacant lot or a vacant um, storefront um, in my community and wished, man, I, I wish a bakery was there or a restaurant? Well, at the same time, there's an entrepreneur who has this great business idea for a restaurant or a bakery, but they can't connect with me because of the securities laws. So we're going to kind of cut through the securities laws, allow um, that entrepreneur whose passion has a great idea to connect with me as an investor and knows the community and, and help grow businesses. Would this have been easier to pass pre-mortgage uh, meltdown? You know, because I think there's so many people now that think in some ways we have to protect people from themselves because mm -hmm. they will go and borrow money that they don't have, they will give money that maybe they can't afford to give. Um, do you think there will be any pushback from people who say, who are a little bit more of a big government, let's say, protect the consumer type of uh, approach to government? Yeah, I think you know, these securities laws have been in place since the 1930s, and they were put in place as a result of the Great Depression, and tremendous damage was done there. And so you have very robust investor protection measures um, that, that make sense. At the same time, here we are in um, 2013, and there's no way they could have anticipated in the 1930s the internet right now. And so it's taking... Um, the securities laws and updating them and applying them to our modern context and allowing companies to tap into their social media and translate that into working capital and doing it in a way that still uh, protects investors. So um, certainly there will be people who um, 
are concerned about investor protection. That's something we're concerned about as well. But I think this is a, a workable solution, and I think states are finding that middle ground between investor protection and, and capital formation. We've only got about 45 seconds, but I know that uh, there was a lot of talk that we would be on the cutting edge here, too, because mm -hmm. you said only two states, I think Kansas and Georgia, have this. Um, and both of those places had bipartisan support for this bill. You're probably hoping and, and thinking there will be bipartisan support here. I am, yeah, definitely. Uh, Wisconsin is the fifth state to take some kind of action. Kansas and Georgia have laws on the books, and North Carolina and Washington have proposed laws. We're the fifth state to do something. And that's exciting, because we can be a leader in, in creating uh, a unique solution that, that fits the needs of um, our, our Wisconsin businesses. So uh, it's exciting to be on, on the forefront, and um, I'm expecting um, bipartisan support, because I believe that this helps both Wisconsin residents and businesses. All right, well, it certainly sounds like something we're going to hear about more in the fall as it goes forward. So appreciate you joining us, David. Thank you. It's very enlightening. Thank you.